Yo guys, it is Sharon back with another video and I can finally make the official preseason tier list video for the Call of Duty League 2022 to 2023 season. MW2 comes out in literally about 7 hours from right now. So uh yeah, I'm getting we're getting really excited out here. I might uh, move to New Zealand really quick and move back if you guys uh, know what I'm talking about. If you don't, don't worry about it. But um so London finally just announced their roster. Obviously, everyone was waiting on them. So now I can make an official tier list. I made it a tier list a couple weeks back and never uploaded it because it didn't really just feel right. Like I didn't, as before, I had Legion in there as well, and I had Legion and Ravens. And I kind of wanted to wait until all the teams were done. But we're back here for MW two. Um, I will start st or stop slacking on the content for MW two. You know, I'll take my my pen of shame and I'll get back to it. You know, um, but let's just get it going. So. First team up, Boston Breach. So I'm going to go off. I don't have anything pulled up right now, so I'm going to go off memory. I'm 99% sure it's uh, Methods, Awakening, and Nero Vivid. Yeah, that's the team. And uh, Coach Zed, I believe. Um, that team, so our, so our uh, what are these called? Our tiers here. I didn't make these tiers. These are just the tiers that, um, actually, is there a better one? I feel like that's kind of fucked up. All right, so I found a different tier list. This one's way better. It has actual letters and not kind of the categories i had before but um so starting off these are in alphabetical order we'll just get, we'll just go in alphabetical order so starting off atlanta phase obviously the only change they made was they dropped arsities and now they have slasher on their team so it's simp abizi selium and slasher i believe they're retaining their coaching staff obviously there was rumors in the offseason that crowder might retire or go coach someone else or we didn't really know what was happening there but it looks like he's going to stay everyone else is going to stay i mean everyone knows if you watch cod this is an s tier roster right uh this team has dominated call of duty for a long time since i mean Simba BZ since Black Ops 4, right? Um, and, you know, going into MW, they were really good, won a lot of championships. Obviously, Cold War, they're the best team in the game all year. And then getting second all year last year, I, there's just no doubt in my mind this team's not going to be good. And then with a vocal leader like Slasher coming in, a guy who knows how to win, world champion, um, you know, all that, all that jazz. I think this team. I don't know if it gets better, but I definitely think it doesn't get any worse adding Slasher. Like, they didn't get, they did not get worse. They might not have gotten better, I don't think, but they definitely didn't get worse. And, I mean, they didn't get worse from S to A, so I'm going to keep them in S. But next up is the Boston Breach. Uh, this team is Awakening, Methods, Vivid, and Nero. Um, and this team, I think, has a lot of has a lot of ceiling potential. Obviously, Awakening, I don't think the past couple of years has been kind of the Awakening we have seen him be before. Um, I definitely think he could kind of take a little step up in terms of his performance. Um, and then we'll see how Vivid does. Uh, obviously, Vivid and awakening of team before so it's not like awakening is coming into a completely new team um like he's, he's playing with people he's played with before uh, obviously methods is one of the best main ars for more of the beginning half of last year but i think he could continue to do the same thing i'm gonna put this roster on b you know um i think they're a solid squad that can do some damage i don't know if they'll win an event you know uh they, they definitely have the potential to and if they hit their stride at the right time they could totally win uh an event but i'll keep them in b for now we'll kind of see what happens after major one uh, the Florida Mutineers, uh, uh, unfortunately, I think this team um, of, who is it, Havoc, Vickle, Major Maniac, and Brack. Um, I love Brack, and I really wanted him to get his chance in the league, and I'm happy that he did get a chance in the league. But unfortunately, I don't think this team was kind of the team to do it with, per se. Um, you know, I think this is definitely a thrown-together roster. I definitely think as of right now, um, this is the worst team, on paper at least, in the league right now. I don't think they're going to be good at all, to be honest. I'm really disappointed in the fact that this is their roster. Uh, I think they could have had Brack, but I think other players were available that, that they didn't get and, and they totally could have. And so I just, I don't know about this roster. I have a lot of question marks. Obviously, I hope they can prove me wrong. I hope every team that I think maybe won't succeed proves me wrong um, and things like that. But yeah, I don't necessarily think this roster is going to be very good. Um, I think it's a lot of rookie talent. You know, I think Major Maniac, obviously, being the veteran there, Brack has played in the league before um you know in bo4 and in mw um and then obviously havoc kind of has played in the league but with wavering you know success and then vickle right is a new guy coming in from challenges last year who was on that toronto uh ultra academy teams who were really good last year so i do think this this team has a lot of potential i think it's kind of a really high ceiling and a really high floor or in a really low floor for this team right they could kind of just end up anywhere on on that on the kind of on the tier list at any point in the year. Uh, next up is Los Angeles Gorillas. Uh, this team is going to be Arsides, Hook, Spark, 
and Neptune. Um, this team, to me, is kind of like a Boston breach. Um, I think that this team definitely has the potential to be really, really good if they hit their stride at the right time. I don't think they're going to be t- contending for championships every event. I think they can contend for championships. Um, but, you know, I don't think it'll be there kind of every event. Um, you know, maybe as our cities has been the last couple of years, I think, yeah, just like Boston, I'll go ahead and put them in B. I'm not going to order the team to kind of just keep them in tears for now. Obviously it's a preseason list. So, uh, actually now nah, screw that. I'm going to put them in order LAG or Boston. Yeah, we'll, we'll do order at the end. Actually, we'll just kind of put them in tears and then we'll go over all of it at the end and I'll kind of sort through power rankings and things like that. Uh, LA thieves are coming off being the defending champions. I really don't think I could put them in anywhere else except for s um they caught they caught fire at the right time obviously last year i think the hype around them being the best players in the game last year is kind of a little bit overrated right everyone's seeing the top 20 vanguard players last year from breaking point which i think is farming for clicks um you know i don't think at all that these players were in the top 15 let alone top 10 of players last year i think they caught fire at the right time but i think being bad for a majority of the year and then showing at the last two events doesn't really make your season um that's just my opinion you guys can tell me how you feel about that in the comments um but la thieves you know i think that this team again like they did, like i have said a lot um they're the defending champions so you know got to put them in s right but they have a lot of potential as well um i do think that they're a team that sticks together, right? They, we saw that all of last year. They're a team that's going to fight through the kinks and kind of make everything work. So let's we'll see if they do that this year. Hopefully they do. Obviously, coming off a of champs, and they're going to be kind of feeling good in the honeymoon phase. So I'll keep them in S for now, and we'll kind of see where that where that goes kind of after Major 1. But the London Royal Ravens, I think that this team is an interesting one. Uh, so it, it just got announced a couple hours ago. So if you haven't seen it, it's uh, Asim, Paulek, Zero, and Nasty. So they got rid of Gizmo. Um, I believe I don't know if Harry's still on the bench, and then obviously they got rid of Afro, who went to Minnesota Rocker, which we'll talk about next. But London Royal Ravens, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in C. I really, I'm a really big fan of Asim. If you've been watching my channel, you watch you watch the videos a lot last year. Um, I really do like Asim. I think he's really good. I do think he was very inconsistent a lot last year. I think he had a lot of maps where he popped off, and a lot of maps where he kind of, you know, play didn't didn't play up to his full potential. So I think that uh, this roster kind of. Um, Needs to rely on its subs to be really good this year, right? So that'll most likely be uh, Nasty and Asim, and then Paul X will be your third, and then uh, Zero will be your main. And I think that's kind of what's going to happen here, and I think it's all dependent on the subs and how good they do. I think Zero is a really good shout. Paul X, obviously we saw the transition from online to land last year that kind of wasn't the same, but we'll see how he kind of transitions this year between online and land, and I think he is a talented player, and he could do very good things this year with the London Royal Ravens. The Minnesota Rocker, um, this team is Attach, Bantz, cami and afro um this team to me is kind of not thrown together but it seems like a really kind of random assortment of people right um you obviously have attach who was really good last year and a minnesota rocker weren't weren't a really great squad last year obviously they didn't make champs um you have cami and bands coming over from toronto those guys are really familiar with each other they're going to play well together and then you got a guy like afro um who was kind of just getting thrown into this team really new and and you know i think that's kind of interesting the the dynamic of these teams i do think obviously afro is nasty he's he was nasty in cold war he was nasty in vanguard right as a solo player afro is really good i think this team is all about how they mesh together i think bants and attach are going to kind of be the vocal leaders kind of keeping the team together telling them what to do a lot of the time and then cameron afro is kind of be like just go kill everything uh basically for this team so I do think that this team could do some damage. I don't, I'm going to put them in B for now. Um, I think they could be a, between B and C. I could also think they could stretch up to A in some people's opinion. Um, but I don't, I'm going to leave that, leave them at B for now. Uh, next up is the New York subliner. So this roster is, whew, I forgot about this one. Hydra, Priest, the Skies, and Kismet. Uh, is this roster for for uh, start of Modern Warfare 2. I think this roster is... Um, I think this is, has a lot of proving to do, right? Especially on the side of Priesta, uh, on the side of Skies. Skies has been right. He's been on the same team for a really long time, so he, he's going to need to show up on a new team, and kind of we're going to see how a new team environment affects him. Um, like I said, Priesta, obviously, he's been really up and down the last, I mean, three, four years. We don't really know kind of what he is going to be like this year. Um, and I think that, again, this is one of the rosters that kind of has the potential to be good. They just need to come out and perform. I think Kismet has been one of the most underrated players in COD since World War II. Um, 
he's been really good, really talented player. We saw it. Obviously, you gave him the chance to shine at Major Four last year, and he did. Took out spotlight and just kind of grabbed it by the balls and just took over everyone. I think that this roster, as of right now, is a C. But I, over pure talent alone, come on, there we go. Pure talent alone, I'll put them over London for now. Obviously, I'm just um, we're gonna do the we're gonna go to go and do the power rankings at the end. But for now, I'll put them above London. Uh, Las Vegas Legion. Um, that's gonna be Clayster, Temp, TJ Halley, and who's a uh, Pro Loot. If you guys watched my videos last year, you know that I was actually asking for Pro Loot to be on this team a long time ago. I think he would be a really good fit for Temp. I think that this team. I didn't really predict anything about Clayster or or TJ or anything like that. Uh, but I said that Byron should should go on this team. I said he should go on the team last year when he was done playing with Optic. I think he's a really talented guy, and I think he went out there and showed that when he subbed in for Optic last year. And I'm happy that he got on a league spot, but. This team, again, you have Clayster, who's getting towards the end of the career. Obviously, if he didn't make a team, he was going to retire. So, like, he's definitely at the very tail end of his career. Um, Temp, who was one of the best players in Vanguard, granted, he was on the on the Legion last year, which kind of held him back a little bit. And then you got TJ, who's kind of unproven, right? He, I think he was a solid player for the Boston Breach last year. Um, I don't think he did anything crazy, but I don't think he did anything too terrible either. So we'll kind of see what what kind of TJ shows up this year. And then obviously Pro Loot, I think, is kind of the the X factor of this team because I think Pro Loot can fry and absolutely melt people. Um, and and so I think, yeah, the X factor is definitely Pro Loot, um, how TJ performs, and then how Clayster's feeling at the main AR. We obviously know Donnie's nasty. Um, he's going to do his thing. I'll put them, I, I'm, I'm honestly thinking low C, but I'll put them in D, but above Florida for now. Those are going to be the bottom two. The only two teams that are going to be in D, and these are probably the only teams that are going to be in C for now. The Seattle Surge regained their whole roster. So Pred, Mac, Accuracy. Oh, was it Pred, Mac, Accuracy, and, oh, and uh, Sid, Dante. Uh, Seattle Surge, obviously, they won a major last year, got top three of champs. They were the most inconsistent team. Right? I've talked about this in a lot of my videos before. Um, Seattle Surge were kind of a uh, uh, really bad and then literally top three and then really bad and then like won an event and then really bad and then top three and then really bad and then got top three champs. Like they were so drastic in their inconsistencies. They went from top 12 to, you know, third to top 12 to first or top 12 to whatever. Like they were either last or fighting for first, right? And I think that's not a good thing to have when you're called the DT. I think consistency is key. Obviously, it's been said in COD for a long time. Um, but pure talent alone, this roster deserves to be in A. We see the potential, the things that they can do, right? They can go out and win majors and beat a team like FaZe, you know? And they can go out and perform, but we'll just have to see it for next year. Uh, Optic Texas. This is a team that I'm actually really interested to see how they're going to do this year. Obviously, last year, they had the problem with uh, Illy's hand, uh, which kind of kept them out of competition and, and kind of held them back. So this year, I'm going to see how they're going to do. It's kind of risky putting them in S when they had that kind of rough, rough year last year. Um, but like the one event they did play together, all full 100% health was the first major, and they obviously won that. So keep all the optic haters or the optic lovers mad. And I love optic too. That's the team I'm a fan of. I'm gonna put them in A at the top. I don't think they necessarily deserve an S tier placing just because of last year and all these things. And we don't know how healthy Illy is. We don't know kind of how they're gonna play on this game. We know this game is a less uh, cracked out game, kind of slower paced game. So how is that going to affect Dashy and Shotzi? Obviously, I think Ilian Scump will kind of can kind of do whatever they want in whatever type of COD. But uh, Dashy and Shotzi are kind of kind of be you know the X factors here on how this slower paced COD uh, affects their gameplay. And the last team is Toronto Ultra. So this will be Scrappy, who is Scrappy Insight, Kleenex, and Standy. Uh, Standy is kind of the variable, and so is Scrappy. Scrappy coming into the in the league for the first time. Obviously, he played the one match against NYSL last year during Vanguard, but you know he um, he dominated Challengers last year. I think that he, he's going to win Rookie of the Year. If you were to give me all the rookies that are playing this year, uh, I'm taking Scrappy over, like Scrappy over Vickle, Scrappy over. Brack doesn't really count as a rookie, I guess, but it's kind of his first year back in the league. Uh, yeah, I'm taking Scrappy over any any rookie that's coming into the to the league this year, no matter if they get picked up after or anything. Scrappy is gross um and i think this guy's gonna come out here he's gonna prove it to everyone sandy he kind of had a rough year last year we're gonna see how he bounces back on toronto ultra i definitely think toronto ultra is an a team but i'm gonna put them at the bottom i'm not gonna put them above surge i'm not gonna put them above, but i'm gonna keep them in a just kind of at the back burner uh so i'm pretty sure on this s i mean i guess you could gotta put la thieves in front since they're defending champions right um so i'll keep them in first atlanta phase in second optic in third seattle in fourth toronto ultra in fifth 
Um, and then the bottom four are probably going to stay. So we'll just we'll go through the B tier teams, right? These teams are the interesting ones, right? That I don't really know what I'm going to go with. So LAG, um, phew. LAG is the problem with them is right, like they have that magic, and and it's about popping that magic again um, this year and seeing how consistently they can do that kind of type, type of magic. It's not magic if you do it all the time, right? So let's see, we can see if they can do that. I think. Off of pure talent, the best roster on this on the beats here right now is probably Rocker. Um, I think the team that will play best together will be probably the Breach, and I think the team in the middle of that is kind of LAG. So we will see kind of how that all, all plays out for now. I'm going to put LAG... Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to put Boston in last, and I want to keep these like this. So it's one LA Thieves, two Atlanta Phase, three Optic Texas, four Seattle Surge, five Toronto Ultra, six Los Angeles Gorillas, seven Minnesota Rocker, eight Boston Breach, nine New York Subliners, ten London Royal Ravens, eleven Las Vegas Legion, and twelve Florida Mutineers. Guys, that's from the tier list. Thank you guys for watching so much. I will see you guys in MW2. Pay attention to the YouTube channel and pay attention to the Twitch. I'm going to be streaming MW2 probably till who knows how early in the morning. So make sure you guys check that out. This is Jen Jaren. Peace out.